Hello, I'm David Maneri, and thank you for joining us on this edition of It Happened in Cambridge. We're at Mount View Cemetery in Cambridge Gault on what can only be described as perhaps the, the, the most pristine day of the winter so far. Of all the gravestones at Mount View, and, and there are thousands, perhaps the most popular for tourists is the one right behind me. It belongs to a woman named Millicent Milroy. Millicent Milroy, who some believe secretly married Prince Edward, Prince of Wales, in the 1920s, was born in 1890 in a small community called Little's Corners, part of present-day Cambridge, Ontario. Their relationship has long been the subject of speculation and rumour. From at least 1927 on, when Canada's Prime Minister, Mackenzie King, wrote about a woman the Prince confided he was in love with. He wrote that in his diary. Even British Prime Minister Stanley Baldwin referred to the Prince's little Canadian miss during the Royal Canadian visit of 1927. In 1968, Melissa had her alleged marriage to the man who became Edward VIII inscribed in the granite of her tombstone at Galt's Mount View Cemetery. Today, that gravestone draws countless visitors. What motivated Melissa to have her long-held secret inscribed on the family tombstone for all the world to see? What were the gains of doing so, and what was the downside? There was no obvious benefit other than the secret she had held for most of her adult life could now be revealed. Perhaps this was liberating for her. It was her truth, and she no longer felt bound to hide it. For her entire adult life, she never made the claim publicly, never tried to profit from the supposed marriage into the royal family. Only in her advanced years did she make it public, and then only by way of an inscription on her private gravestone. From the 1920s onward, however, she consistently told the same story, that there had indeed been a secret marriage and two children, a story she told sparingly, with no hint of wanting fame or fortune. She didn't go around proclaiming this or telling everybody she met the story. It was only known by a few intimates, until 1968 when the inscription went on the stone. And, as she well knew at age 78... She had only her reputation to lose. There would be many critics, of course, and people who would ridicule her. What a seemingly outlandish tale. Over the years, there have been a lot of journalists, a lot of people, researchers, who've tried to get to the bottom of this story. Did Melissa Milroy marry Prince Edward? Tried to find documentary evidence that would suggest that it might be true, or to disprove it, for that matter. And nobody's really been able to do much of either. It's it's hard to prove. There there aren't really documented facts that that conclusively prove it. And there, uh, by the same token, there aren't that many things that um, facts that uh, that disprove it as well. And and so we're left with this enduring mystery, uh, which is tantalizing. Mm -hmm. And boy, it's fun to think of what might have been and whether it was true or not.
Well before the Prince of Wales arrived in Galt on that long ago October day, the entire population of Galt and indeed Preston and Hespler and neighboring communities knew that Galt was on the itinerary for that royal tour of 1919. There was a celebratory mood in the area after four long and difficult years of war, a war in which many Canadians perished. But having a future king in their midst was reason for celebration despite the pain of so many dead. Prince Edward, heir to the throne, had served as a staff officer in the war. As Canadians flocked to see the boy prince, there was this unmistakable feeling that he was somehow one of them. They welcomed him wholeheartedly, especially those like Galt's Reed Oliver, a pilot in the war, who were fortunate enough to return. Others, like my great-uncle William Maneri, never did return. He died in the Battle of the Somme in 1916. But his widow, like many other war widows and her two children, came out to see the prince that day. The story of Millicent Milroy is a fascinating one. Um, the only the only question is whether it's true. And l there are people on both sides of the fence. Uh, there are a lot of people that believe that it, it really did take place. This marriage between Millicent Milroy, the Canadian school teacher, and Prince Edward, the Prince of Wales, who became Edward VIII, the King of England, and, and famously abdicated th the throne. Uh, to marry Wallace Simpson, the American divorcee. Over the years, there have been lots of newspaper articles and other things written about Melissa Milroy. Gary Kirkham wrote a play called Queen Millie of Galt. Veronica Ross wrote a novel, Millicent. Dozens of journalists have written newspaper and magazine stories over the years. The book that I mentioned by uh, Veronica Ross called Melissant, uh, it was published a number of years ago. Uh, Veronica was a, a, a very talented writer. Her story was such a romantic one, and I think it's all the more romantic because we may never really know. Millicent was honest, upright, and possessed of abiding integrity. You know, based on the things I learned about her through my research, I think there's a very strong possibility her story is true. There's a sadness when thinking about the Melissa Milroy story. What effect did her supposed marriage have on the young Canadian school teacher? In contrast to the prince, it was profound. She would never marry again. She'd found her fairy tale, Prince Charming. She need to look no further. The chance romance with the future king, if real, unalterably changed her life. But was it for the good? This question remains unanswered. Melissa Milroy was born in 1890, a single Canadian school teacher. And it seems very likely and probable uh, that she met Prince Edward when he came here on October 24th, 1919. Right after the war, Prince Edward had been a staff officer in the war, knew a lot of the Canadians. Uh, during his royal tour of 1919, he met a lot of people he had seen overseas during the war. And um, so it was, a. I think he enjoyed the tour because of that, on the one hand. On the other hand, every stop on that tour was the same old, same old. Um, the speeches, the glad to have you here, and and everything else was just so repetitive. It must have been extremely 
uh, boring, I guess, uh, for the for the prince to to experience that day in and day out. Uh, but he did it. The the headline in the in the, in the Galt Reporter at the time talked about Prince Charm. I mean, the actual headline said Prince Charming. It wasn't just residents of Galt that came out to see him, and they they came out in droves. I mean, I, I, almost every citizen of the the town went to see the prince. Uh, but they also came from neighboring communities, Preston and Hespler. And those communities are now all um, form Cambridge. They were amalgamated into the city of Cambridge uh, a number of years ago, 50 years ago, as a matter of fact, uh, in 1973. And, uh, uh, among those people that were there, of course, were tons of young school, impressionable school children. And Authorities made a point of wanting to get the, the school children from all the neighboring communities uh, to come out to see the prince because it was a once in a lifetime event and something that they had hoped would, they would remember the rest of, the, of their lives. And, and of course they did. Listen, Mel, Melroy was one of the school teachers bringing her children there. And there's an interesting um, anecdotally, uh, uh, anecdotal piece of evidence that suggests that she was there. Um, uh, the late Bob Green, who was a, a well-known local writer, worked for the, the the newspaper probably 25 years after the prince had been in in Galt. He was also Bob Green was also a painter um, and a musician, and also interestingly enough, ha ha was married to Veronica Ross. And Veronica Ross uh, was a well-known Canadian author. Uh, Bob Green and Veronica Ross died within a few weeks of each other a few years ago. But um, they both had a, a, an abiding interest in Millicent Milroy. And one of the reasons they had such an interest was Veronica Ross wrote a novel, a mystery novel, called Millicent. And it was, it was based more or less on Millicent Milroy. It, it was fictionalized. It wasn't factual. It wasn't, uh, didn't have all the facts. And people sometimes think that it, it's a factual account. It was, a, it, but he's, Veronica, I knew Veronica and Bob, and, and, and Veronica told me late in her life that she wanted to um, uh, redo it as a, a work of nonfiction. And she did write a very lengthy two page article for the Kitchener Record uh, a number of years ago. And, um, and and it was very extensive, and uh, and I've utilized that article um, uh, when I was researching Melissa, and um, uh, as well as a ton of other articles that are contained at the in the in the Grace Schmidt room, the history room at the Kitchener Library. Bob Green, when he worked at the Cambridge Reporter uh, years and years ago, um, he saw in their morgue and a morgue. At the newspaper is, is a place where they store all the old newspapers and they have a record of every every paper and and other documents like important important photographs in their morgue they had a photograph bob saw it told me about it of the prince of wales laying the cornerstone at the galt war veterans memorial home which is now the galt legion i've been down to see the the stone that the prince laid in 1919 and when he was there, they got some photographs of him. And at the one end, just maybe coincidentally, at the one end of the photograph off to the side was Millicent Milroy, the school teacher. That's the only piece of evidence that the Avis proved that they were in the same place at the same time. Speculation is that she met the prince on that trip in 1919. And she claims that they had a relationship, that she met him here in Galt but that they had had a relationship out west. And uh, when she said out west, I think the assumption is in Alberta. I don't know if she ever mentioned the name Alberta as to where it was, but she claimed that they, they got married out there. And um, if you take a look at that article that I mentioned on it happened in Cambridge, it goes into detail about all of that. And uh, so it's all very tantalizing and, and interesting.
uh, Prince Edward was was a known ladies' man, and and I mean you could see it in the some of the headlines during his 1919 tour in Canada. They referred to how popular he was with women, and uh, so he was very attractive. Uh, and and as the 20th century unfolded, we found more evidence, uh, or more evidence was revealed revealed about about affairs he had with single women, but also with married women. And uh, uh, so, I mean, they, they were just legion, the number of, of uh, affairs he had. Based on the knowledge we have of Prince Edward, it seems obvious he had two affairs of the heart during his Canadian tours of 1919 and 1927. One was with a Canadian woman. The other was with Western Canada. So it's not unreasonable to think that uh, he, he might have had one with uh, Millicent Milroy, who was at the time a very engaging and, and pretty um, young Canadian school teacher. She was a few years older than um, Prince Edward, but but single and and very attractive. If you look at her photograph on the website and and on this video, you'll you'll see what I mean. Um, and uh, there were references uh, the, by the Prime Minister at the time and and by the British Prime Minister about a a little Canadian miss, as they call her, uh, that the prince was uh, uh, involved with. So the references to somebody that he was seeing, somebody he was enthralled with, um, we know that's exactly what happened uh, with with um, Wallace Simpson, and he just could not let her go and, and, and gave up the throne of England uh, so he could be with her.
drop me a line. Tell me what you think, if, if you think that uh, um, they were actually married. As Veronica Ross mentioned in her article uh, from, it was around 2001, that lengthy article that she wrote, uh, she said, perhaps we'll never know. And, and maybe that's true. Or maybe maybe something will come up and, and come to light in, in, the, uh, in, in the ensuing years. And we will find out. And uh, the, the poss possibility or the prospect of that is, is uh, it awaits all of us out there. So, and I'd encourage you to, to subscribe to this channel if you can. And, uh, and also uh, take a look at ithappenedincambridge.com. Thanks for joining us on this edition of It Happened in Cambridge.